All right. Um, I think, I, well, okay, I'm going to go through the content. We'll save the questions for after because we've got enough people here that it might slow us down a little bit if we do questions during. So try to hang on to your questions until afterwards. Okay. Um, all right. Meal planning. Everybody's meal plan is going to look different. So that's why I can't sit up here and say, okay, here's a 1,200 calorie meal plan. Here's exactly what you have to do and go. Okay, your neighbor next to you might have food allergies or you might have specific food preferences or your neighbor might be a male, you're a female and there's a 50 pound difference. So everybody's nutrition needs are gonna be different. Um, basic things with a meal plan, however, we wanna see balance. What I mean by that is the macronutrients should have good balance. The macronutrients are your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates. If they are not balanced, that's when you start to see these like blood sugar imbalances, you're hungry all the time, you're fatigued, um, you're picking the wrong food choice, you know, because you're hungry, you're picking the wrong food choices. So we want to see balance at meals between those macronutrients. The handout with the pictures on it, that top picture, that shows you, that gives you a depiction of how you can balance your plate for macronutrients. You've got half your plate is vegetables, and the reason that half your plate is vegetables is because there's lots of fiber there to fill you up. There's very little calories there. There's lots of antioxidants. One quarter of your plate is for a lean protein. We need protein at every single meal, okay? Especially with the amount you guys are working out. Your muscles need nutrition. If you do not feed your muscles, you're just negating the work that you're putting in in the gym, okay? And then, yes, you can have some healthy carbohydrates on your plate. That's the last quarter of your plate. So that would be things like your quinoa, your brown rice, your sweet potato, um, what am I missing here? Beans, those types of foods, okay? And it gives you some other examples too. The other um, thing I like about this handout is if you are out somewhere, I mean, you can just kind of compare your portion sizes to everyday objects instead of, you know, being like, well, I don't have a scale with me, I'm in a restaurant. You know, you can just say, okay, um, a deck of cards is the size of one, you know, one portion of meat. Okay, and you can kind of compare that way. And then there's other details there. Okay, so the right meal plan should fuel and repair. Like I said, your muscles need that nutrition. Every time you are working out, especially if you're doing strength training, you're creating little micro tears in your muscles. That's a good thing, but you need the nutrition to repair those micro tears and build the muscle structure back up. Muscle dictates metabolism. So even when you're not in the gym, if you are building muscle, you are burning calories like all day long, the more muscle you have, okay? So you've got to fuel and repair your muscles. The right meal plan should foster a good relationship with food. Any diet, any diet you pick, most people can do it for six to 12 weeks. I mean, you could do a crash diet, you could do a grapefruit diet. I mean, pretty much everybody can stick to a diet for a short period of time. The, where it becomes important is after the diet. Now what are you gonna do? So if you are struggling, if you feel like you don't have a good relationship with food, you're doing a lot of emotional eating, you are labeling foods as bad, I can't have that, that's off limits, you may want to reassess your relationship with food. Your uh, meal plan should be satisfying. You should not feel deprived, like hardly at all, okay? Yes, there are some sacrifices with weight management. You know, you may not, you may have to cut down on, I don't know, soda or candy or sweets or, or whatever, um, but you should not feel like you are in deprivation mode. And then again, it should be sustainable. Like I said, grapefruit diet, fine. You can do that for however many days. It's after the diet. Can you maintain that for the rest of your life? 
All right, so we talked about um, what a healthy plate should look like. Regular and consistent meal patterns. Now, there's a lot of good research coming out about intermittent fasting. Um, have some of you heard about that? Okay, so it's basically, and there's a couple different versions of it, but basically it's cycling periods of like very restricted diet, and then there's days where you're eating, you know, like 2,000 calories, and then there's days where you're eating like 500. There's some good research coming out on that. However, um, if you find that you tend to pick poor food choices, if like if you don't eat breakfast and then all of a sudden it's lunch or dinner time and you're eating two, three, four portions of food, you're reaching for the salty or the sweet snacks, please follow, try to follow a regular and consistent meal pattern. So what that means is every three to five hours, you should try to eat a little something. After five hours, that's when our blood sugar starts to drop, that's when a lot of us start to feel cranky, that's when it's like, okay, it's vending machine, it's the first thing I can find in my cabinet when I get home. So every three to five hours. Now, if you eat lunch at noon, let's just say, and you've got meetings all afternoon, you don't get home till seven, try to have a little snack in there just to break up that block. Okay, I don't, I don't know if that's almonds, if that's a Greek yogurt, if that's fruit, just something to kind of break that up so you're not coming home absolutely famished. Um, it also helps keep your, your energy levels stable. Okay, the calories in, calories out thing. Yes, science says that if you have a calorie deficit, you should see weight loss. Um, but probably most of you know this by now. If you're having 1,200 calories from candy versus 1,200 calories from a balanced diet, you're going to see a much different result. Your um, energy levels are going to be way different. You're, again, you're in here working hard. You're working out. Your muscles, they can only do so much for nutrients from candy. You need antioxidants from fruits and vegetables. You need protein for that muscle repair. So, you know, if somebody says to you, oh, well, all you need to do is just stay within your calorie needs, there's a lot more to that. Snacking is okay. Some people think that they, you know, snacking is just is off limits. If you're not a snacker, that's fine too. You know, have your three meals and that's good. Um, but again, snacking can be appropriate, again, if you're going like a seven hour stretch where you're not having meals or anything, um, a snack can be appropriate. What I usually tell people to do with their snacks is to have some sort of protein, because again, protein takes longer to break down, it takes longer to digest, it's gonna stay with you longer, it's gonna help you to feel fuller longer, versus <coughs> if you have like a little 100 calorie pack of, you know, um, chips or something. I mean, carbohydrates like that, they're gonna go right into your bloodstream, they're gonna give you a little burst of energy, and then like a half hour later, you're like, okay, what's next? Um, at your snacks, try to also have a fruit or a vegetable. I'm gonna continue to push the fruits and vegetables with you guys because I look at food journals all the time and I rarely see a person make the minimum fruits and vegetables intake. Fiber is so, so important. There is a lot of, again, more research coming out about the, the um, importance of gut health and how it relates to just about everything, from depression <clears throat> to um, diabetes to obesity to IBS. I mean, your gut health is so, so important. If you are not getting enough fiber, um, if you're not getting enough fr fruits and vegetables, that is a great place to start. Uh, most people should be getting between 25 and 35 grams of fiber a day. So with your food journals, if you're finding that you are way under that, that's a great place to start. So, fruit and vegetable at your snacks. Um, avoid trigger foods. Again, I don't like to say that certain foods are completely off limits um, because again, I worry that that you know, messes with your relationship with food. However, if you know that having certain foods in the house is, you know, a really temp, temp, what am I, tempting, there you go. Um, <laughs> You know, try not to have those foods at snacks. 
try to make that more of like an occasional thing or a treat. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that too. And then like I said, carbs alone lead to those energy crashes. So we need to see some sort of protein, some sort of fiber, something that's gonna take longer and stick with you. Fluid and hydration. This is another one that we tend to forget about, but it is so important. Your metabolic rate, it is not gonna work efficiently if you're in a dehydrated state. Your cells need water. Um, a good rule of thumb to start off with is try to get half your body weight in ounces. Uh, the other thing you can do too, so like let's say your requirements are 75 ounces a day. Uh, you can experiment come, when you come to the gym before your workout, weigh yourself directly after your workout, however many pounds you lost, that's an additional two cups onto your 75 ounces. That's the example I'm using. Does that make sense? So if you go to, I don't know, Zumba, and you get on the scale and you've lost two pounds, you now need to increase your food intake by four more cups, in addition to the 75 ounces. Um, okay, fluid and hydration, it does not, it's not just limited to water, so for those of you who, it's like, ugh, you know, water is just, it's so hard for me to get in. Milk counts, tea counts, low sodium vegetable juice counts, and regular vegetable juice counts too. If you, if you sweat pretty heavily, if, if um, your blood pressure is normal, you can consider doing regular vegetable juice. And same thing with broth. Those all count as fluids. Focus on foods with high water content. Again, if you're eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, you are getting some good sources of hydration. And then limit your alcohol and avoid the sugary beverages. The alcohol leads to dehydration. The sugary beverages, it's not that you won't get fluids from them, but now you're adding on a lot of unnecessary calories. The other thing I want to um, stress is not dwelling. If you make a less than healthy choice, Please don't dwell in it. I know you're in a contest, and I know that's very easy for me to say because I'm not doing the contest. Um, but again, it, this goes back to having a better relationship with food. If you, you know, went to a party over the weekend, we got here. We got a we got Memorial Day coming up. Um, so if you go to a party over the weekend, I mean, yes, try to be, you know, conscious of the choices that you're making. But if you, I, I don't know, something happened, you had an extra portion of dessert whatever, like move on to the next. Do not let that dictate the rest of the day that didn't, then that turns into the rest of the week and now you're getting on a scale on Monday and you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So whatever, you, you made that choice at that time, the next meal, you're right back on track. Again, I know that you're in a contest, um, so maybe this is more of like thinking outside of the contest, but can allow yourself occasional treats. <coughs> Boost your exercise routine. Um, so yeah, if you ate a little above your calorie needs one day, you can boost your exercise routine if that's an option the next day. But again, that's not a license to just eat whatever and then come in here and try to negate it on the, you know, on the treadmill or whatever. Because again, that will catch up to you. We just, unfortunately, we cannot outrun a poor diet. <coughs> Journaling, your um, trainers are gonna be on you about journaling and for very good reason. There is so much out there that says that journaling is just, it's key. I know that it's kind of cumbersome, I know it can be annoying, um, but journaling. I, you know, if you prefer to write it down, you can do that. Apps are really wonderful, um, you know, Back in the day when I was going to college, I didn't have an app. I, for a project, I had to sit there three days worth, every single nutrient map out. It was, I, I cried over it, let's be serious. Um, <laughs> you, you have lots of options now with these apps. I mean, you can save entire meals. So if you eat the same thing for breakfast every day, great, put it in a group, save it. The next day, hit breakfast, okay? So you don't even have to search the database for these foods. Um, and do it as you're going, like on the go. Like, okay, just eat breakfast, boom, 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 there it is. Okay, let's keep going. 
Um, journaling is great for accountability. This is not just about your trainer looking at your journal too. You should be looking at your journal. Um, you know, at the end of the week or a few days or after a weekend or whatever, like sit down and look at your journal. You know, see like, are you finding patterns? Like why is this always happening on Mondays? Why is this always happening at 2 p.m.? Like, oh, I didn't realize I was eating that many servings of that food. Or, oh, hey, I, I did do good with fruits and vegetables. Um, so really take a look yourself to teach yourself, like, what's going on. Um, include details. So I know I just said that, like, keeping it in an app is really easy. Um, but if you find that you are a person that, you know, you journal and you're like, I just, I just don't know what is going on. Like, everything looks good. I'm not seeing the results. Start adding these in the notes section. What times are you eating? Are you, like, if you start recording the times and you're finding that you're eating breakfast at 5 a.m. and you're not eating lunch until 2, okay, well, that might be something that you've got to work on. Where are you eating? Are you eating while you're standing up and, like, making the kids dinner and, like, running around doing chores? Or are you actually sitting at the table? Who are you with? Some of you are social eaters. Are you out on a Friday night and having cocktails and like, you know, appetizers and all sorts of stuff? Um, emotions, that's a huge one. A lot of people tell me like, I'm really good, I'm really regimented during the day and then I come home and it's just like, Whoa. what is going on at night? Are you truly hungry? Because if you're truly hungry, then yeah, I mean, eat. Take a look at, do you need to eat, you know, more earlier in the day? Or are you bored? Are you stressed out? Are you tired? Like really try to identify why. Why do I want that certain food? Or why do I feel like I need to eat from 5 to 10 p.m.? Um, and of course, include your portions, right? Because if you tell your trainer that you, you know, had some oil on your vegetables, well, okay, that's, that's fine, but if all of a sudden you're like, well, it wasn't a teaspoon, it was two tablespoons. Okay, that's, now we've got a significant, significant calorie difference. And then types, were you having a diet soda or were you having a regular soda? All right, so where to get started with having a healthier lifestyle? First and foremost, realize that proper nutrition is a <laughs> lifelong process. This is not something that you can just do for 12 weeks and then you're done with it. Like this is just, it's ongoing the rest of your life and it's always gonna be changing, right? Because you're always gonna enter a new stage of your life. You know, you might turn 40, you might turn 50, you might go through menopause, you might, I, I mean, I don't know. Things are gonna change throughout your life. So it is always going to be ongoing. So let's just get that out right now. Um, if you're a little overwhelmed with what to do or where to start, just pick like one thing you can work on for the next one couple weeks. I, again, I know you're in a contest, but um, start with one thing. Or if you're like, ah, I, you know, I can do a bunch of stuff. Great. I mean, you know, figure out where you're at. Pick a couple things, one thing, adopt that. Let's make it a habit, and then pick something else to work on. And then support. That's one of the wonderful things about this program. You've got teammates. You've got a trainer. Um, you, you know, you've got Renee. You have a dietitian. You've got even your um, group fitness instructors. A lot of you are going to be going to more, you know, classes and stuff. Like, you know, lean on them. Um, ask them questions. Um, ask each other ideas. Like, you know, or talk each other off the ledge. Like, if you're having a bad day, you're like. I'm so stressed, I just want this, you know, just, I mean, talk to each other. <coughs> um, meal planning tips. On your, yes, on your meal and snack ideas, there's some ideas there. Um, this is obviously not an all-inclusive list. I just tried to put, like, easy, quick things that you could put together, grab. They're also very kid-friendly. So if you're making something for yourself, you could make it for your kid, you could make it for your husband, your wife, I mean, whoever. Um, so there are some ideas there. And these are pretty like 
portable things too. Like you could just throw them in a little cooler in your car and take them with you. Um, meal planning is key though. I mean, again, there's no way around it. You've got to pick, I don't know, a day on the weekend or a day during the week where you're sitting down and you're actually picking out some recipes. You're actually going to the grocery store. You're actually getting together how you're going to make your meals. There's just no way around it. Um, some resources here, and I didn't put them on here, but they're pretty good resources. MyFridgeFood.com, I haven't had a lot of time to play around with it, but supposedly you can put into this database like just random items you have in your pantry and it will come up with recipes for you. So this is a great tool for like budgeting, especially, you know, like, and this happens to me all the time. I'm like, I have two half jars of tomato sauce in here and like, you know, a quarter bag of quinoa from who knows when. So, I, I mean, plug this stuff in, there you go. You've got stuff, let's get rid of it. It's budget friendly, we're good. Um, lots of websites and magazine Facebook pages are doing this now where they've got, um, Goodful is one of them, where they've got the demo, like the food, like the recipe demo. It's literally like the camera is on top of the plate or the bowl and they're like, okay, quarter teaspoon of this, or you know, whatever. They're pulling, pouring it in, they're showing you exactly what you need to do to make the recipe. It's great. I wish I would have thought of it myself. So Goodful, if you Google Goodful, that's one of the, I think it's like a BuzzFeed affiliates or something. Take a look at that. They've got lots of those videos. So if you're new to cooking, don't like cooking, whatever, you know, that's a great resource. Um, so speaking of being new to cooking or don't have time to, for cooking or whatever, what I would recommend here, again, this can get really overwhelming if you're trying to do meal planning and you're just like, ah. Um, start with one to three recipes. Just, you know, go on Pinterest. We have a Pinterest page that's on here too. Or go to Goodful, like just, okay, three recipes that sound appealing. Get that together, make a grocery list. Start there. You do not have to have like five to seven recipes for every single week of the month, every month of the year. Like just get a couple together, cycle it a couple weeks, you know, then maybe add in another one. Like, okay, I'm getting a little tired of this one. Let's add a different one. Like just start building that up. At the grocery store, everybody always says shop the outer perimeter and for good reason, right? You've got your produce on the outer perimeter, you've got your fresh meats and your fish, all that good stuff. Um, but don't completely forget the middle, right? The middle's also got like bulk beans, bulk rice. I mean, there's some good stuff in the middle. So um, make sure your ca cart is colorful. If you get to the checkout line and it's all brown or all white, probably need to go back to the produce department and put those fruits and vegetables in there. Um, resist the checkout triggers. That kind of goes along with this last point here. Try not to shop on an empty stomach because that's when we tend to like impulse buy. Like, Ooh, that looks good. I'm going to grab that. And really, maybe we should not have grabbed that. Um, so, and there's a reason why there's candy at the checkout line because they, you know, you're standing there and they know, they just know it's good marketing. So don't go on an empty stomach. Have like a little snack or something right before you go or eat dinner before you go or, you know, plan it out. Um, spend some time reading your ingredients and your nutrition facts. Once you find your favorite products, you know, this shouldn't take you long. You shouldn't have to be in the store for two hours looking at nutrition labels. And the other thing is, if you're shopping for mostly produce and fresh meats and fish, you really shouldn't be buying a whole lot that's got nutrition labels anyhow. Um, the reason I inc included the ingredient list is because that tends to be forgotten. We're always looking at numbers, which is good, um, but your ingredient list is just as important. Your numbers might look fantastic. Oh, it's only got 100 calories, there's no fat, blah, 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 blah. Then you get to the ingredient list and it's like, this preservative, sugar, you know, not the greatest ingredients. So don't forget to read that. Um, keep a grocery list. 
There are apps for that as well. The one that I use is our groceries. It's free. I can text the grocery list to my husband, so that way if he's going shopping, here you go, or vice versa, so that way we're not duplicating, picking things up. Um, and then that way I have a master grocery list. So once I purchase something, I just tap it, and it crosses off and goes to the bottom of the list. I don't have to look at it. And then vice versa. If I'm looking for it, if I want to put it back on my list, I tap it, it goes back up. At home, here's another good like starting goal. Go home and assess your kitchen. In your cabinets, if you have trigger foods in your home, move them out of sight. Put them on a top shelf or a bottom shelf where you're not, you know, like where it's not right at eye level or put it behind stuff. Again, not that you have to go home and like throw it out, but just it's back there. It's not the first thing you're going to see when you open up your cabinet. On the flip side, that's where you should put your healthy snacks, right at eye level. That way when you come home, oh, I forgot my snack at work, I haven't had anything to eat since 11 a.m., it's 5, I'm starving, boom, there's your healthy snack right when you open the cabinet. Um, when you're doing your grocery list, add staples like nut butters, quinoa, beans, lentils, they don't expire quickly, and you can make big batches of these things and you know, like quinoa is really diverse, beans are diverse, lentils are diverse, they can go in many different dishes. Um, so those are great to have on hand. In your fridge, um, if it's within your budget, pre-cut vegetables are awesome because if you just are like, I hate cutting vegetables or I just do not have the time and patience for this, pre-cut vegetables. Have healthier dips um, in your fridge. Keep your Greek yogurt at eye level so you can just grab that. You might consider having like a snack center or a grab and go area in your fridge or your um, cabinet as well. Um, keep things like eggs and cheese, you know, those types of staples in your fridge. And then on your countertop, again, stressing the fruits, um, keep a nice appealing looking fruit bowl on your your countertop so again when you walk in and you're starving there it is okay there's things you can even do in your car um, one of the things that I do is I always have my water bottle with me um, and I sip at each stoplight like that's my thing I gotta get my water in like okay hey, there's a great time that's my cue to sip um, make sure that you get something that's properly insulated. If you like hot beverages or if you like cold beverages, um, I always say I should work for this company. I, I love my Hydro Flask. Like it, I love cold beverages. I don't like room temperature. So this keeps it really cold for a good amount of time. Um, the other thing too with hydration, if you don't like plain old water, now we're getting in hopefully uh, the warmer months, you can put sliced fruit in your water. Um, that can really give it, you know, something else than just plain old water. Keep snacks in a cooler lunch bag in your car. Motivational reminders and sticky notes in your car. If you need a reminder, like you always forget your lunch, have that sticky note on your, you know, dashboard somewhere. Like lunch. <laughs> if you've got to run out of your car to go get it, there it is. At work, um, remember to take sips all day. You know, try not to save up, like you've got to do eight cups of water, you've done one before you left the house and now it's 5 p.m. and you've got seven more to go plus whatever you lose in your workout. Sip, if you get little breaks, sip. Uh, fruit, oh yeah, we talked about, the, oh, well you could do this with tea and coffee too. If you need a little pick-me-up, um, and you've already had your snack or whatever, because yes, the snack can be a little pick-me-up. Uh, you can do some fruit and juice tea or coffee. At dining establishments, um, if you forgot your lunch, didn't plan for lunch, going out for lunch with colleagues, whatever, uh, the wonderful thing about dining out is that lots of restaurants are trying to offer healthier options. So there are many establishments around here where you can at least make requests that they make things a little bit more to your liking. 
Um, chain restaurants are required by law to have their nutrition facts available to you. So if you go online, you know, you can probably find that right at your fingertips before you even go to the restaurant to order. And then there's always the option of half portions or sharing. So if you go to a restaurant you're not familiar with, never been there before, don't know what to order, you just kind of pick something because you're in a hurry, okay, and then you're like, oh, maybe this wasn't the healthiest, okay, cut it in half, save the rest for later. All right, what questions do you have? Yes. Okay, so with summer, it stays daylight so long. Yeah. Kids baseball games, the whole nine yards. Yeah. By the time we get home, eating dinner at 8.30, 9 o'clock, what's the rule of thumb between the last time you eat and the time you go to bed? So, if, okay, let's say, I'm just gonna throw a number out there. Let's say your calorie requirements are 1,600, right? And you get home at 8, 8.30 at night and you've had 900 calories. I need you to eat. I need you to meet your calorie needs. So, even if it's 8.30 at night, okay? Because again, if you're, if you're doing those hard workouts, you, your muscles, you need fuel, you need replenishment. So even if it's 8.30 at night, I still need you to eat. Make healthy choices, right? Like have a healthy dinner or a you know, healthy snack. So make healthy choices, but I still need you to eat. I do not want you to go to bed hungry because you're definitely not gonna stick with it if you're hungry all the time. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, we've talked about this a little bit before as well, the starvation mode. If you are under eating, if you are not meeting your minimum calorie requirements, your body is going to hold on to the weight because that's how our, our bodies are programmed. It's a, it's a um, survival mechanism, which is great. That worked for our ancestors and that's how we got here today so that we didn't starve, you know, in a two day span. However, we have like foods really abundant for us, thank goodness. Um, but our bodies still function like that. So if you're only eating, again, for instance, 900 calories, your body's like, hey, I'm gonna hang on to these calories because I, I feel like, you know, oh my gosh, where's the food? So does that kind of help? Is that answering your question? Well, is there like, you know how the, the rule of thumb you were growing up as a kid, don't go swimming for two hours? Oh, after. that way? Well, like, yeah, like if you're gonna get ready to go to bed, your bedtime is 10 or 10 30. Yeah. You find yourself eating dinner, finishing at like 9 o'clock. Yeah, I mean, the only the only reason I usually tell people to leave like a two hour window is just like for comfort more so. Like, you know, because if you eat a meal and then you go to bed right away, like that can be kind of like digestive wise, it can be kind of uncomfortable. Um, so that's something that you're going to have to kind of play around with, right? Like, again, I still need you to eat something. Can you take something to the game? Well, sure. I mean, we're we're trying different things. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I'm just thinking, again, that's going to require some planning ahead, but yeah, if you like pack a cooler, again, maybe it's not a full dinner, but you know, maybe it's just like a healthy snack, so at least you're getting some calories in early and then making up the rest later. Um, Don't you want to have some activity though after you eat? Like, I think what he's saying is if you eat that late and then you don't have that much time before you go to bed to, oh. to get any physical activity in right. and to get that burn going. Oh, it's not like necessarily. Eating and going to sleep. Not necessarily. Again, this this is one of the instances where it's calories in, calories out. As long as you're picking healthy calories, and if you're putting in, if you're going to the gym the next day, you're putting in the work. Like you are, you're gonna, you're still gonna use those calories up. It's kind of like <clears throat> runners, and when they carb load, like. They're not going to go for a run, you know, if they carb load the night before, they're not going to go for a run immediately. They're still going to burn it off the next morning. So you still have a little window there. So yeah, you, yeah, ideally you'd exercise after you eat a meal, but it, it, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out like that. So yeah, please don't under eat just because of that, because you've got a late night and you're afraid to eat late at night and you won't be able to burn it off. Yeah. What's your thought on, um, I've heard that it's not good to eat fruit later in the day because of sugar. Do you think that's true? I don't, I mean, I haven't seen good research to support that. 
So, I mean, if you want to have a piece of fruit with dinner, I think it's fine. Like I said, I, I haven't seen any studies to back that up. I think, you know, if you're eating most, like if you're, if you're eating nine servings of fruits, like let's say you're eating, you're trying to do nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day and it's mostly fruit, then okay, maybe we need to shift that toward more towards non-starchy vegetables because you could be getting, you know, a lot of carbs and calories that way. But, you know, I, I have not a stickler for that. One of the trainers had told us in the past that you try not to eat a lot of carbs later in the day because if your body will store it and you won't burn it off. Again, I don't I don't have research to support no. that. Okay. So I mean yeah, I and it you know it depends on your lifestyle. So she was saying that um, that she was told that you really shouldn't have you should have the bulk of your carbs early in the day so that you can burn them off. Yes, in an ideal situation, sure, go for it. But again, if your lifestyle does not dictate that, again, if you've got stuff going on until, you know, 8 o'clock at night or whatever, like, please still eat, just make healthy choices, okay? But if you're not working out till that night, you should have good carbs before your workout. Before right. you need carbs well, yeah, for energy. So, but she's saying you know, like... No, I know, but I'm yeah. just saying, like you said, it depends on your lifestyle. Like, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and again, we don't live in an ideal world. Like, yeah, in an ideal world, like, we'd all work 9 to 5. We'd, you know, we'd all, like, we're having a meal here. We're, you know, I mean, sure, that'd be great, but it just doesn't work like that. So you do, I mean, do the best you can. The thing is, the other thing is to... I don't want you guys to get so hung up on rules because I feel like for some of you that that kind of sets up that like do you know where I'm getting like um like a failure mentality like oh I you know I I ate I ate at 8 30 at night I just I completely blew my day like please you know don't don't let that dictate you know your choices okay just try to make the healthiest choices possible um, but yeah please don't under eat under eat though that I don't want you to do that's almost as bad as overeating honestly because you're gonna run into nutrient deficiencies if you're under eating your muscles are starving I mean that I can't have you doing that either yes I'm having trouble with journaling like dinners Okay. Because I make a lot of stuff just kind of throwing stuff in a pot or, you know what I mean? Oh. And it's, it's hard because I don't do a lot of processed food. I don't do a lot of packaged stuff. Yeah, no, that's good. And fine. I don't, I'm having trouble with journaling that because it's like, okay, so even, okay, like eggs in the morning. Mm -hmm. If I have two eggs over easy and I use, you know, a teaspoon of coconut oil, I'm logging the teaspoon of coconut, but I'm not using all the oil. It's just, oh, you know sure. what I mean? So I don't know when, and dinners are much more complex because I'm kind of throwing a lot of stuff in together. And, you know, what I, I'm, I'm having trouble breaking down everything. And I'm finding that I'm trying to find comparable things that are packaged foods, and that's what I'm journaling. Yeah, but, I but know it's not I'm, I'm doing healthier than what the packaged foods are. Sure. Do, are you using an app? Yes. Are you writing? Yes. Okay, because like Spark People and My Fitness Pal, you can put in your own recipes too. Have Have you played around with that I yet? I have not. Okay. I'm using the Fitbit, yeah. Oh, just I don't know. Does Fitbit? I don't, I don't know that you can use. I know you can customize know. foods in there. You can. Okay. But it wants you to break everything down, like, and I don't know how to break down the calories and you know. Yeah, I'm, is anybody familiar with how to do the Fitbit app? Because that, I use, I just sync mine to Spark People. I haven't you used it. You can sync it with your Fitbit app. Yeah. 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 That's right. Plug in your recipe and then send it to the Oh, okay. Yeah. And I don't know, I mean, maybe Fit, I mean, I, I'd have to play around with it. Maybe Fitbit's really awesome. It's just, I yeah. started on Spark People years ago, <laughs> yeah. and I'm used to it, so I just, when I got this, it was like, I'm just sick in it. Is there any kind of magic way to journal that kind of stuff? Well, aside from entering the recipe yourself into the database, um, what we usually do is um, go by exchanges. 
So for instance, if you're doing like a casserole dish, we just usually say like one cup is two carb choices and two protein choices. So protein choices, it depends if it's a lean protein or a high fat protein. If you're doing a lean protein, which I'm assuming you are, two choices would be like 35 a piece. I know I'm doing a lot of math. So 70-ish calories and then two carbs is 80, 160, so 160 and 70, 250. So approximately 250 for a cup of like a casserole type dish that's made with lean protein. And again, I, that's not perfect though. That's just me using an exchange system. That's, it's an estimate, but at least it kind of gives you a roundabout. Yeah. Um, if, yeah, um, let me make a note like put a star next to your name or something on the sign-in sheet because I can email you that information because yeah, I know that was you. a lot of like math I just did. Thank you. <laughs> okay, other questions? All right, any tips that you want to share with the group that do work well for you, that have not worked well for you, that maybe you want to share because those can be helpful too. I think it's good to have uh, bigger meals earlier in the day. Okay. Because you burn things off and during the day, you know, you're moving around and stuff, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if, the, if that works for your lifestyle, yeah. And if you work out early, it jump starts your metabolism. Mm -hmm. So, come to 5.30 a.m. soon. 5.15 tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, too. Um, and I don't, you do it? I don't know if I put that into the feeling your workout. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I put that into the next um, presentation. So if you're wondering, should I work out on an empty stomach or not? That is just really all dependent on you. If you work out on an empty stomach, yes, you are going to burn more fat. However, if you cannot make it through your workout because you are lightheaded, you know, not feeling good, can't give 100%, then, then at that point it's like, what's the point? So you just kind of have to know yourself. I know myself, I came in one time to work out with Jeremy in the morning. I did not eat enough. It was like, no, I'm gonna pass right out. So that didn't work for me. However, if you're just the opposite, you're like, I can go for a 20 mile run on you know, empty stomach, fantastic. So just you just gotta know. You. I, I'm, giving, I'm giving kind of an extreme example, but anyway. So. All right, well if there's nothing else, you are free to go. Um, so those slips of paper that I left up at the front, if you have specific tips, questions, anything, write them on there, fold up the paper, put it in the jar. I will post them on the Facebook page for the nutrition page. I will not include your name. You don't have to include your name. Okay? Please put your chair back. That is also helpful.